Hey guys, Kevin here. In this video, we'll look at models and controllers for post types. Now, out of the box, when you install Type Rocket, it will save any custom field that you add to your site, which means that that layer of addition to your database is pretty much open. If you're using a single user site, like you have one or two admins on a site and you're not using a lot of plugins, you feel like the environment is contained, then that's really not too big a deal. But if you expand the use of post types in general to a lot more users, then you're gonna to wanna to take the extra step to start adding models and controllers to limit what data can be saved and how it's saved. And so we need to dive into, of course, the models and controllers of TypeRocket. So let's do that now. So here's our sample plugin that we built with the book post type, and we have these custom fields I want to clean things up a little bit from the last video. Let's get rid of that post title field. That was a built-in field and add the title field back here. And we'll save that. And then just so you can see how that reflects on the site, we now have our title field back here. Okay, so how do we create a model and controller? Well, we do that by going into our Type Rocket installation and that's going to be wherever you install Type Rocket. For us, this is the MU plugin. And what we'll do is we'll go to this app folder. This app folder is where all of our models and controllers are stored. So for example, if we look at controllers here, we'll see that we have one for category, comment, options, which is the options table, pages and posts and tags and users. And the same goes for models. Now, we can edit an existing model. Let's say this post model. And in here, we can specify what custom fields that we want to be accessible and saved on the posts post type. So to demonstrate how this works, we'll jump over to our post type here and work with an existing post type. So TR post type. And the way we work with an existing post type is we use the post type ID as the only argument of the registration process. So I'm gonna set editor form and add some custom fields in here. I'll try to do this fast. Form, echo, uh, form, and we'll do text field to keep it simple. And then we will say name. Let's just do name here. It's an easy field to do. Okay. We'll save this and then go to the post section. And edit hello world and scroll down and here we have name. Type in my name. Update this and we'll see that Kevin is saved. However, this could be overridden. Maybe somebody would go in here and add some bad code. Okay, let me see if I can pull this off. Okay, so Right now I save it to this name, but maybe I wanted it to be my attack. Okay. And then I'll close that and update this. And then if I jump over to the code again, I save that data, but I saved it to a different uh, meta name. If you watch the built-in fields, you'll know how data is saved or the built-in fields video, if you watch that, you will know how data is saved. And essentially, the data gets saved to the posts metadata table. So I think I called it my attack. We'll see if I need to add a space in here. Yeah, so here's my attack. And you can see I, also, I was able to insert data this way. I was able to insert the word Kevin. So even though I didn't specify that field, it got saved into the database. So the way we get around this is we set up what's called fillable fields. So on our model, we specify a property called fillable, and then we just define the names of the fields that we want to be savable. In our case, we want name to be savable, and that's all for the custom fields. After refreshing the page, I'll see a little pencil icon and if I look at the my attack, say last name, last name here, if I update, we will see that only the Kevin 
custom field got saved, my attack can no longer be saved. We can also do a little bit more with this. We can do protected guard and we can guard certain fields. So instead of protect or opening up specific steel fields, we can do the inverse. These are like excluding certain fields that can be saved. So if I do name, and then it's best to check the model you extend. So WP um, posts has some fields I don't want to have overridden. So I'll do that real quick. We want to add basically ID and the post type. So we'll save those and now those will no longer be able to be overridden. And if I refresh the page here, um, we should see a shield if I get rid of this fillable. If there's an override, fillable will take precedence. So that's good to know. And there's a little shield here. So now this cannot be updated, but everything else can. So my attack can now be updated. And I cannot update um, this name field, okay? So we'll see that that stayed the same, but this one got updated. So that's guard and fillable fields. And that's one of the bigger features of models that we'll be using with post types. However, we're not really interested in this posts post type. We're more interested in our other post type here that we have, the book post type, which is custom. So we're gonna to need to create our own model and we're gonna want our own controller later. So to create a model, we just wanna add a new PHP class and I'm using an IDE for this, but essentially it just automatically fills out some text inside the file. So it's not too big a deal. You can just type in your um, content yourself. All it did was add this text. There's, there's nothing else that happened, so don't worry. Just type in namespace app model and book, and then I just need to extend the WP post class. Okay, and then that's gonna import this um, specific class for me. And now because of this, I can um, set my post type. So if I go back to post, I need to set my post type to the post type name. So I'll go book here and I'll do book. And then I can set those fillable fields. So protected, fillable. And I had two fillable. I had the ISBN and the book art. Okay. So I'll go back to my book section here. Look at made to stick. And then we'll see that I have a fillable field with the book art and the ISBN. And then I'm not sure how this will work. We will try it. Put Kevin in here and update this. And we'll see that it does not save this custom field because we were not using the built-in WordPress editor. We're using our own custom field, so that can't be saved. So it applies to built-in fields as well. But these fields can be updated because they have the pencil, whereas this one does not. So we need to get the pencil on there. So I need to add post content. And again, this correlates to the ID name of the fields that we have. So post content here and then um, book art and ISBN. So I'll refresh this page and we should see a pencil next to this book description. So that's how we can specify these. And then if there's certain fields that we wanted to guard, again, we could have done the guarding system within this model. So all of this is looking really good. Now that we've looked at the basics of models within WordPress for these post types, we won't get into the ORM part of this quite yet, but we will look at controllers now. So let's do that. Let's look at controllers. And like we had before, we have this post controller and that post controller is what manages how data is saved whenever we save our data inside of TypeRocket. So 
Like we did with the fillable and guard fields, we could override some of this to add some extra security. However, the fillable and guard fields do what we need it to in order to protect us. But we might want to add some extra functionality. For example, what if we wanted to do some other things whenever a post is updated and it passes through our WP post controller for the post post type? Well, we can do that. So if I look here, I have the updated function. So I can just do public update oh, function. And then I see that it passes an ID, so I'm going to need that. And then I'm going to call the parent class update, and I'm going to pass it the ID. So it will keep working as normal, but then I can do my custom things. So let's look back at the browser and see about doing some custom things on this post type using the controller. So I know I have some data here and I'll make sure that it still saves, update, and it looks like we have an error because I did not set equals null as the default on this and it was giving me a warning I just wasn't paying attention so we'll do that so make sure that whenever you override something that it does follow the same pattern okay and let's refresh and run that again and we'll see that everything ran I get rid of my attack here update that and we'll see that everything's still updating but now I've hooked into this update piece. For example, this controller comes with a request object and it has some fields on it. So let's get the request and I actually think I can just do request. Yep, just get request and then I can get the fields And let's just look at all of our fields. Now I could var dump this, but I do have a debugger installed, so I don't need to use PHP tools. I'm just going to basically inspect this at runtime. So I'm going to hit update here. And then it's going to show me everything that's in my fields. So I have my attack and SEO and meta. So that's, that's quite useful to know about. And then maybe I want to do some things with these fields. Maybe I have a custom database table that I would like to save some of this data to instead of putting it inside of the um, meta table, for example. So maybe I want to do like a quick check and if a specific field is set, then I want to end the request. So I'd say if uh, not empty, fields and then we'll get the uh, my attack and if that's not empty then we need to WP die and then message you are attacked okay so I'll end that inspection and then we'll refresh this page and send it off and then everything's fine because there's no attack data. But then if I put in any information here, you are attacked. So it's quite useful in stopping the system from saving data. And you could do all kinds of things here. Essentially, you have a lot open to you through these controllers. So let's uh, close some of this out and delete our changes here. And look at what TypeRocket provides us in terms of making the creation of these models and controllers a little bit easier. So if I delete this model here, we'll see that we have basically a base installation. And TypeRocket comes with a CLI called Galaxy. So to access that, we have to go into our location where TypeRocket's installed and go into the TypeRocket installation. And you'll see here there's this Galaxy uh, script and if I do PHP Galaxy it's gonna give me a list of commands that I can run and one of those is make controller and make model so I'm gonna do PHP Galaxy 
make colon model. If I pass a dash C, it will create a controller as well. I want to tell it that it's using the post type system. So post will be what I'm using and then I'll give it the name of book. I'll hit enter here and then it will create the model and the controller for me. So if I go back to app controllers, there's the book controller. And if I go down here, here's the book model and it's already populated the post type for me. So that's nice. And then I can begin to use those systems in the same way that I've used the uh, WP post controller, for example. So that's a very baseline example of controllers and models within post types. In a future video, we'll dig deeper into controllers and models, but at this level, we're just going to keep it simple. So I hope this video has been helpful to you in learning about models and controllers as they relate to post types.